Good evening, I'm Chuck Todd here in Washington and welcome to MTP Daily. And welcome to what could be the point of no return for Trump's candidacy. Today's one of those days that felt like maybe the dam broke. Trump is being epically outspent. He's grappling with major defections in his own party, facing new criticism just in the last hour over those Second Amendment people comments you just heard. And perhaps, most alarmingly, if you're just simply a candidate for president, the polling deficits continue. We've got breaking news out right now from a trio of new NBC News, Wall Street Journal, Marist Battleground polls. And it spells some serious trouble for the Trump campaign strategy in the Midwest and in the Rust Belt, the blue collar battlegrounds. In Iowa, Clinton is now up by four points in a head to head matchup, 41 37 before the convention. Clinton was up three. In Ohio, which just hosted the Republican convention, Clinton has jumped out to a five point lead, 43 38. It's significant because the race in Ohio was tied before the conventions. And folks, even though Iowa and Ohio are close, Keep this in mind, these are the two states that Trump had been doing the best in this entire last three months. And then in Pennsylvania, it's a big lead for Clinton, 11 points, 48-37. Before the conventions, we had her up nine in the Keystone State. So not huge bumps for her, but significant durable leads uh, nonetheless. But the biggest gains in all three states, by the way, are something that we're seeing as a pattern. It's among college-educated white voters. And here, the numbers don't look any rosier than they do on the national front. Our new NBC News survey monkey poll out this morning has Clinton with a 10-point lead over Trump and a head-to-head -head matchup. And of course, it's even more when you look at it among uh, certain demographic groups. So the list of Republicans, though, rejecting their nominee is growing today. Republican Susan Collins of Maine went public with a blistering rejection of Trump's fitness for the office, saying this, quote, rejecting the conventions of political correctness is different from showing complete disregard for common decency. I have become increasingly dismayed by his constant stream of cruel comments and his inability to admit error or apologize. Mr. Trump lacks the temperament, self-discipline, and judgment required to be president. Those comments setting off a small earthquake in the GOP. Well, Senator Collins joins me now. Good morning. Good afternoon, uh, Senator Collins. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Chuck. Great to join you. All right. Uh, you and I have had long conversations, I think, on air about this issue, about how, uh, whether or not you could support Trump. The tipping point for you was what? The tipping point for me were Trump's criticisms of the Khan family who lost a son in Iraq. It was inconceivable to me that anyone, much less a presidential candidate, would criticize the grieving parents of a fallen soldier. I just could not understand that. Then we saw Tr Mr. Trump double down on his attacks on the Khan family and actually suggest that it was Mrs. Khan's religion that was preventing her from speaking at the convention. So that was just a bridge too far for me. Uh, there were some new comments just this afternoon. I don't know if you heard them. Uh, and in case you didn't, let me play the full clip again. It has to do with the Second Amendment, what Donald Trump said about Hillary Clinton. Take a listen. Hillary wants to abolish, essentially abolish, the Second Amendment. By the way, and if she gets to pick, if she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is, I don't know. Well, the Clinton campaign did not like that last comment, uh, and they have put out a statement on this, by the way, saying the following. This is simple. What Trump is saying is dangerous. A person seeking to be president of the United States should not suggest violence in any way. That was Clinton campaign manager Robbie Mook. Do you believe that he was trying to incite violence there? I've been very critical of Donald Trump, but I actually don't think that's what he was saying. I think he was suggesting that the Second Amendment advocates across the country might be able to come together to pressure the Senate to reject her nominees should be, she become president. That's how I interpreted it. But it is an example of Donald Trump's looseness with language that can lead to interpretations that, such as the one put out by uh, Secretary Clinton's camp. You know, you, um, 
I heard you earlier today in an interview. I think you said you might write in Jeb Bush, and I know you had supported him early in the primaries. It's possible Maine is a swing state, that Maine's votes either get split up or they... If you thought your vote was decisive, do you still not vote for Hillary Clinton? Um, if you thought, a, if, or if you thought your third party vote actually helped Trump, would you end up voting for her? Well, first of all, I don't think my one vote is going to turn the election in Maine. So I think that's a hypothetical that's, that's not going to occur. Uh, I have said that I cannot support either of our major party candidates. And that does leave me somewhat at a loss as to what to do. <laughs> I looked at the Libertarian uh, ticket, and if it were switched so that Bill Weld, the former governor of Massachusetts, were on top, I would vote happily for him. I know him well and think highly of him. It's uh, much harder for me, based on what I know of him, to vote for Governor Johnson for president. Uh, so that's why I suspect that I'll end up writing in someone, probably Jeb Bush, but I haven't reached that decision yet. You know, in, the, uh, in September, when you come back to work here in Washington, I'm not, not saying you're not working now, but you come back to Washington from the recess, uh, do you want Mitch McConnell to bring up the Merrick Garland nomination? I ask this, if you don't want either Clinton or Trump, that means you don't want either one of them, I assume, picking the next Supreme Court justice. So what would your recommendation be to Senator McConnell? I very much want just Judge Garland to be brought up before the full Senate. I spent an hour with him when he was first nominated, and I asked him some really tough questions about his judicial philosophy, his views on the Second Amendment, and many other issues, and I was really impressed with him. He's clearly qualified, he has the right temperament, and I think it was a very good nomination by President Obama. I hope that, uh, that he will be brought up, if not in September, in the lame duck session, regardless of who is elected president. Do you, so do you think, I'm impressed. Uh, do you think that Secretary Clinton would nominate, renominate him, or would you be concerned that she might go with somebody more liberal or more progressive and, and you're better off going with Garland? Well, that's the very interesting scenario that I have raised with my colleagues in the Senate. And that is that they may be hoisted on their own petard here. If Hillary is elected, I believe that she is much more likely to nominate someone who is to the left of Merrick Garland, because I believe that President Obama deliberately and wisely, in my view, chose someone who was a centrist. And it would be the height of irony if Hillary wins and asked President Obama to to withdraw the nomination and so that she can make her own choice, which I think almost certainly would result in a much more liberal uh, nomination. And that's why I think it was a mistake not to consider Judge Garland. At least put him through the hearing process, see how he would do. Right. I suspect he would do well. Senator Susan Collins, Republican from Maine. Always good to talk with you. Thanks for taking some time out today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chuck. All right. Well, let me bring in the panel right now. Republic